Every year, in the month of February, the quiet city of Chipata comes alive as Ngonis from all walks of life travel to Chipata for the annual pilgrimage and display of their rich African heritage. King Mpezeni and his people settled here in 1883 due to the position of the Kapata Hills forming a natural defensive position against enemy forces. The British named the place Fort Jameson, while the Ngonis called it Kapatamoyo, translated a life-saving territory. Scores of people lined up the Umozi Highway to await the royal procession, while a gathering for the presentation of the first fruits was on hand to take place at Ependukeni Palace in Feni. It was the first time Nkosi was receiving the first fruits from the newly built palace. The presentation of the first fruits to the king is called Masuela and is done before the actual ceremony. This is the time to celebrate what we have achieved in the past year. So through the paramount chief, we praise God through our sisters. We are very, very excited for us as Ngonis this day today is not only of cultural significance, but is also a way of paying homage to our ancestors. Um, and is also a celebration for the first fruit uh, of, the, of the harvest. Um, tribute to Inko Singh, Gwenyama, the Zeni the Fourth, um, for consistently uh, making sure that every year the Ndwala is successfully held. It shouldn't go without mention that Nkosi Yamankosi is himself one of the major farmers and produces various types of crops. The king himself leads by example. He himself is one of the major producers in the city of Chipata. If, if there is any a farmer that produces very copious amounts of corn, of groundnuts, of cotton, or whatever, it's the paramount chief himself. Since the ceremony is held during the rainy season, a heavy downpour seemed to disrupt the gathering, but could not hinder the offering of the first fruits. The rains could not go on for long. Suddenly, the impis came out in Ngoni military style, as if to attack an enemy. Chief Madzimawe, led the presentation of the first fruits to Nkosi Yamankosi, David Njengembaso, Jere, Paramount Chief Mpezeni IV. But before that, it was time for royal prayers and salutations. This is called Esibongo. Hey. 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 Hey.
Where is the big of a child? Where was the Paramount Chief Mpezeni the fourth receives the first fruits and prepares for a procession through Chipata town to Laweni Palace at Mtenguleni village. <laughs> It was Ngoni Day as jubilant crowds cheered as the procession meandered through Umozi Highway section of the Great East Road in Chipata headed to Laweni Palace in Mtenguleni. Ntenguleni is the headquarters of the Ngoni people, a place of sacrifice where he takes the role of high priest for his people. But who are the Ngonis, one may ask? The Ngonis hail from KwaZulu Natal at the end of the 18th century. There were tribal wars in South Africa called the Mfekane. And one of Shaka's generals called Zwangenda Wajere left with a group of impis to find a place up north. The Ngoni people were a fierce tribe and traced their origins to the Nguni and Zulu people of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa and are a subgroup of the Zulu people of Shaka. In the 1800s, they raided tribes they found along their route. Theirs was not an ordinary trip northwards. They were on the run. Shaka, king of the Zulu, was in pursuit. Led by Zwangendawa, the Ngonis passed through Swaziland and Zimbabwe, then crossed the Zambezi River on the confluence with the Luangwa River at a place called Zumbo. The year was 1835. Scores of women, children and elderly Ngoni people drowned and others were eaten by crocodiles while attempting to cross. Then suddenly, the sun darkened and the sky became pitch black. It was the solar eclipse of November 19, 1835. The eclipse marked the crossing of the Zambezi River by the Ngoni people. But they were frightened. They thought the gods were angry with them for the plunder they had committed along the way from South Africa. During the procession that lasted many years, the Ngoni lost their language and some of their traditions. They left their wives behind and married from tribes they conquered along the way. Their children lent their mother's tongues, Nsenga, not the Zulu language of their fathers. Another group settled in neighboring Malawi. By the time Mpezeni settled in Luangeni, he was quoted by the Portuguese and British. The British South African Company of Cecil Rhodes sent agents in 1895 to obtain a treaty but were unsuccessful. Hence, in 1897 at Luangeni, with over 4,000 impis, Mpezeni rose up against the British who were taking control of Nyasaland and northeastern Rhodesia and was defeated. The white man had a superior weapon, the gun. The Ngonis were no match to them. King Mpezeni signed the treaty, which allowed him to rule as paramount chief of the Ngoni in Zambia's eastern province and Malawi's Mchinji district. His successors, as a principal, take the title paramount chief Mpezeni to this day. Nkosiyama Nkosi, David Njengembaso Jere Mpezeni IV, is actually a king. The Ngoni people are settled in modern-day eastern province of Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique, and Tanzania. On the second day of the Ingwala, Impis gathered at Chipata Airport to await the arrival of guest of honor, Crown Prince Mangusutu Butelezi. Prince Butelezi inherited the chieftainship of the large Butelezi chiefdom 
a Zulu-speaking tribe in South Africa, in 1953, a position he still holds today. In 1970, Butelezi was appointed leader of the KwaZulu Territorial Authority. The plane carrying the prince finally landed at the airport amidst the foot stomping by the impi. Butelezi was elated with the Impis and joined in the war dance before proceeding to Laweni Palace for some ceremonial activities. <laughs> After meeting Nguenyama Paramount Chief Mpezani IV, Prince Butelezi was taken to the palace arena as impis from different crows entertained the guests. This stage in the ceremony assures the chief of his authority among his people. The participation of women at this stage of the ceremony cannot be ignored, but for this year's Ingwala, however, no breasts were to be laid bare. They were hidden and tucked away in blouses and t-shirts of different colors. This was done so as to conform to the dignity of women in the modern society. Hence, the 2019 Nwala traditional ceremony was celebrated under the theme promoting gender equity. We as chiefs cannot be left behind because everything begins in the chief talks. And that is where you see a lot of women suffering. So we want to ensure that we inculcate into these people the, 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 the issue of educating the girl child. It's not just empowering the girl child. There's this also aspect of the chief, the paramount chief, has been said now, let's not expose the women to sort of abuses. So you've seen in this year's uh, uh, and to other ceremony, uh, women now have covered their breasts. You see, we, most people have uh, commented on this as indecent exposure. So we thought, well, let's uh, realign ourselves with bonded way. There are better ways in which we can ex expose our culture to, to the world, not necessarily, you know, bearing the, the breasts. During the royal salutations, Prisma Ngusutu Butelezi could not help it but respond to praises said in his honor. <laughs> On the final day of the Inwala, an important ritual is performed and is the pinnacle and essence of the entire ceremony. <laughs> After all was said and done, Nguenyaman Kosiyamankosi had to proceed to the main arena for the final ceremonial activities. Paramount Chief Mpezani IV made his grand entry into the main arena amid ululations, shouting and excitement from subjects and guests alike. <laughs> After greeting Prince Butelezi, Nguenyama then made his way to the royal seat. As usual, he was decorated by a lion skin. Ngoni chiefs put on the skin of a leopard while the rest can put on any. Then suddenly, 
Majorates, mascots, and a brass band from Congo DRC subjects of Senior Chief Mwata Kazembe marched in the arena in carnival style. Then Senior Chief Mwata Kazembe of the Lunda-speaking people of Luapula province also made his grand entry. Before his disembarkment from the vehicle, a muzzle loader was shot in the air. This announces his arrival and makes his presence known. With everyone settled, it was time for the royal prayers and salutations. It was now time for the Ngonis to showcase their dancing skills and followed by various dances from different groups. Speaking through Mkwinda Sakala, chairperson of the Ingwala Organizing Committee, Paramount Chief Mpezeni IV stated that it was time women took center stage in the affairs of the Ngoni Kingdom. Tradition has over the years been cited among the reasons for the widening gender disparities between women and men. We must empower our women, but also ensure that we're not leaving our men folk behind. As traditional leaders, we are agents of society's change. The appointment of the current chairperson of the Nchwala National Organizing Committee by the Goni Royal Establishment demonstrates my and my other chiefs' commitment as traditional leaders to address gender inequalities. After the royal address, Impis entertained guests with the lively and spectacular Ngoni war dance. Guest of Honor Crown Prince Butelezi stressed that women have been the backbone of the Zulu Empire 
and was sad that women were not given the respect that they deserved. Kirin Pezend IV has been a symbol of this unity. He has been a symbol of strength. He has been a symbol of the well-being of the Ngoni people. We remember this when he enters the dancing arena to Sand of Warriors singing Unang Umpezeni Satyauga Nai Etna Ngombe. Ye Nkosi Amakos Umpezeni, with whom we migrated from south together with the cattle. We have the privilege today, ladies and gentlemen, of listening to his wisdom as he speaks to us about preserving cultural heritage through gender equality. I applaud His Royal Highness, His Majesty, for the choice of the theme for this particular Nuala. The issue of gender equality must take center stage at this point in human history. Women have always been the backbone of our societies. Through them, the next generation is born and raised. Through women, the fight for food security is waged. Through women, our families are nature. Through women, our families are healed. Through women, our families are maintained in a spirit of hope. Through women, we find strength for the future. Yet throughout the course of history, women have not always been honored the way they deserve. In some cases, even my own country, we have failed to protect them from abuse and we have failed to respect their equality. So every 16 days in December, we have got activism against violence against women and children. There is a lot of violence against women in South Africa. But times are changing. It is important that we change our perspectives, my brothers, the men of Goni people, to keep pace with the march of progress. <laughs> After all was said and done, it was time for Munikelo, the slaughtering of a black bull. This is the climax of the ceremony where a black bull is speared by an impi. Another warrior quickly slits the throat and collects the blood which Paramount Chief Mpezeni drinks. This is an act of atonement with the ancestors and God. Then Gonis with their knives cut the carcass. Within a short period, the animal is dissected and the liver is roasted on the spot. In Goni custom, the liver is believed to be the most nutritious part of the bull and is easier to roast. The impis then cut the liver into pieces. The liver was now ready to be served to Nkosiamankosi Mpezeni IV and his guests. The roasted meat is called msamulo. After Munikelo, Ngwenyama and his Zulu brother Butelezi then took to the stage to celebrate the successful animal sacrifice to the ancestors.
a royal praise singer, reminds Ngoni youths to uphold their cultural heritage in this modern society. Looking uh, at nowadays what's happening, most of the most of the young people they have lost their cultural values. They don't have a thing to commit themselves into culture. If as young people we're not engaging ourselves, uh, we may say in future there will be no culture. So as a young person, as a young man, we are the future leaders of tomorrow. So Indeed, the celebration of the 2019 Nwala traditional ceremony would have not been possible without the support from government and other cooperating partners. Events of this nature are not very easy to organize because you are talking about attendance of over 5,000 people every year. Logistical implications are there, but we have managed, and we've managed because there's been overwhelming support, first, from the Ngoni Royal Establishment itself, um, and before that from Inkos Yamankosi himself. Uh, he has helped us open doors for us, and also from the government, uh, both materially and logistically, and also from our cooperating partners as well. Our main sponsors, um, Atlas Mara, Stan Big Bank, the Electoral Commission of Zambia as well has come in to try and spread the message at grassroots level for responsible uh, voting as well. They've helped us. And there's a couple of others, too numerous to mention, that have come through and it only remains for us as an organizing committee to thank him very dearly for once more coming through uh, and helping us. In the past, Nwala used to be a ceremony for offering of the first fruits and paying homage to the ancestors. In this modern day, Nkosi Yamankosi also uses the ceremony to address issues facing the kingdom. The theme of this year's Nwala ceremony was made possible through a decree by King Mpezeni to respect and empower women through education so that they could participate in all sectors and contribute to domestic, national and international agendas for development and sustainability and also improve the quality of life for women, men, families and communities. It can be said without doubt that the 38th celebration of the Nwala ceremony was fruitful and uplifting. Giving power to the women. Uguniga amandla abesifazane bayete nkosi.